Welcome back to Hannity. So even after the deadly Paris terrorist attacks, the 2016 Democratic candidates continue to downplay the threat of radical Islam. Watch this. I don't think we're at war with Islam. I don't think we're at war with all Muslims. I think we're at war with jihadists. We are not at war with Islam or Muslims. We are at war with violent extremism. We are at war with people who use their religion for purposes of power and oppression. Um, and yes, we are at war with those people, but I don't want us to be painting with too broad a brush. This brutal and barbaric group is perverting the name of a great world religion. I don't think the term is what's important. What is important to understand is we have organizations, whether it is ISIS or Al-Qaeda, who do believe we should go back several thousand years. And that's not all. They're also dismissing concerns about the legitimate threat of ISIS infiltrating Syrian refugees. Listen to this. Now is not the time for demagoguery and fear-mongering. As Americans, we will not be terrorized we will not live in fear. During these difficult times, as Americans, we will not succumb to racism. We will not allow ourselves to be divided and succumb to Islamophobia. We will not turn our backs on the refugees from Syria and Afghanistan. And just a few hours ago, Hillary Clinton tweeted out, quote, we've seen a lot of hateful rhetoric from the GOP, but the idea that we turn away refugees because of religion is a new low. Back with us for more, the author of the brand new book, Crippled America, How to Make America Great Again, 2016 Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump. You know, of the 21,000, I think 84 and 94 refugees from Syria we've taken in so far, 96 percent have been Muslim. Only three percent have been Christian. Um, is there, if there's no way to vet them, and they do have these sympathies, and our national intelligence director and others are saying ISIS will infiltrate, how is that hateful by definition? It's been that way for a long time. In Syria, you have the Christians where their heads are being chopped off randomly and at will, and you have the Muslims who, I'm not saying they have a great life, frankly, but it's not as bad as what the Christians go through. I've been told by very, very good sources and people that really understand what's been happening over the last number of years, the hardest thing you can do is be a Christian in Syria and come into the United States. One of the easiest places in the entire world to come into the United States from is Syria if you're a Muslim. So if you're a Christian, you can't get into the United States. If you're a Muslim, it's one of the easiest ways to get into the United States from Syria. So. I'll tell you what, there's something going on out there that is maybe you and I don't know about it, but it's becoming more and more obvious. And as far as Bernie Sanders, I thought you were going to put his quote. First of all, he's not going to win. He gave it away when he gave up the email situation. And probably she's protected. Hillary's protected by the Democrats. So she's not going to be have problems. Well, she should have problems because everyone else has had big problems and they've done much less. But Bernie Sanders quote that I thought you'd have in there that he blamed the Paris attack on global warming. That was the beauty. Well, that's what that's he said what in I the debate. I wanted to turn yeah. it off, but I had an obligation to watch the rest. He said, mm -hmm. he said during the debate, he said that the Paris attack is a, uh, you know, having to do with global warming. I, I mean, the whole thing is crazy. The third guy shouldn't even be on the stage. He was the mayor of Baltimore. You see how that worked out. He shouldn't even be on the stage. And frankly, Hillary, with her attitude, can't win. In my opinion, she can't win the election. She's it's weak as can be on illegal immigration, she is going to lose the election, especially if I run against her, but she's going to lose the election. But they have been wrong so often. They said you get rid of Mubarak, even though they gave him money and F-16s and tanks, and yeah, you get rid of Gaddafi, right, they said right. things would be better in the Middle East. They've gotten far worse. The president miscalculated. They're not the JV team. Uh, they've been wrong on so many, so many different issues so many times. I'll even put up on the screen, Senator Jeff Sessions has pointed out all these instances where we bring in immigrants, you know, from Uzbek and, and immigrants brought here from Kuwait and Ghana and Yemen and, right. and even the the Boston bomber refugees, etc. All these people come in, and we'll put it on the side of the screen, and we have been wrong so many times they get here and commit acts of terror against us. So we have been wrong in the past. I don't think Americans can have confidence in the system of vetting. How do you, as again, you, you can't ascertain what's in anybody's heart, can you? We have been wrong so much. And don't forget, for two years I've been telling you, take the oil, hit the oil, bomb the oil, take away ISIS's wealth, do it, do it, do it. 
They just started doing it after this horror show happened. They just started doing it. So now all of a sudden people are saying Mr. Trump was right. Donald Trump was right. But now they're bombing. Finally, they're bombing the oil and they're taking away some of the wealth. But they also have a lot of money coming in through a crooked banking system. The banking system is sending a lot of money to ISIS. We have to change that. Nobody knows more about the banking system than me. Believe me. Well, then my question for you. But they have a backward banking system. Yeah. But then my final question for you is, OK, you're elected president. This is a huge problem. How quickly uh, could you fix this problem? How quickly does the wall get built and, and you take control of it? And give me the specific steps that you take and how fast it would get done. First thing I do is I get everybody together because we don't want to do this by ourselves, Sean. This is a problem. This is a worldwide problem. I'd get everybody together. That includes Russia. And I've been right about that, too. Now, all of a sudden, Putin's going wild with bombing ISIS. And that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Who needs to take the credit? Let him have some credit. But I would get everybody together and I'd blast the hell out of them. They wouldn't be there long. Believe me, I would blast the hell out of them. And you're right. The source of wealth, their primary source of wealth is the oil that we should have kept when we left Iraq. We shouldn't have been in Iraq, but we should have kept it when we left Iraq. But their primary source is the oil. We should bomb the hell out of it. And now they're just starting to do that, but they're two years late. And interestingly, after Paris, all of a sudden, they start bombing sites that they knew about for a year and a half. Why didn't they bomb them a year ago? They're training sites, and they could have bombed them a year ago, but they started bombing them after the tragic events of Paris. So, so many things are wrong. We need leadership in the world now. You know, it's really a worldwide leadership. But boy, do we need leadership in our country. Well said. All right, Mr. Trump, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.